Everyone knows tonight's species is my favorite fish. It can jump six feet high, it can be six feet long, and is found in six feet of water and can be fished for out of a 16 foot boat. The Silver King can be found throughout all of Florida's waters. Tonight, it's all about the tarpon here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Welcome back to the Florida Insider Fishing Report. We're your hosts, Bree Gabrielle and Captain Rick Murphy. And today, Rick, we want to welcome our first live studio audience of the season, hailing from Ozello. We're so excited to have everyone in the studio with us. This is like a whole new thing for me. It I feel is? like I'm at Disney World. Yeah. So, so what have we People. got? We got we got 12 plus half. 12, 12, and half? 12 and a half right here. Oh, good. Yeah, but we've got we've got everyone joining us today, so we're super excited. We've got a new audience and growing a human all in one night for you. <gasps> all in one night. Unbelievable. Well, Rick, I know you're extra excited because we are talking tarpon, which we all know is your top shelf choice besides redfish. So, yeah, I guess we'll be bowing to the uh, tarpon king tonight, won't we? Absolutely. Which Make is you. Make no mistake about that. Which is absolutely you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit it. All right. Well, we also have to say hello to Dave Farrell at the CCA Workbench. Dave, what are you going to be doing today? I'm stealing money. This is what I love to do. Absolutely I love to come nothing. here and I'll have Rick talk and talk and talk and Perfect. talk. Perfect. And I'll throw a question out and then I'll talk some more. So untrue. He'll be doing new products. No, yeah, he'll, do he'll be the question master, that's for sure. All right, well, it's definitely tarpon time in the Discover Crystal River Northwest region. So let's see how Jeff Hageman is guiding us into this Mother's Day weekend. Go for it, Hag. Tell you what, tarpon, you couldn't ask for a, a, a better game fish out there. It's one of my favorite to chase. I spend three months of my year chasing them around. Uh, you couldn't ask for anything more. Big head shakes, skill rattling, big jumps drag screaming I mean you can't ask for more out of a fish uh, they can be found throughout my entire region uh, small juvenile fish can be caught in residential canals and springs most of the year but the major migration is in the summer months and the best time to target those big fish uh, fishing passes bridges grass flats April through August is the best time to catch the big ones uh, spinning plug fly gear are all great ways to catch them you can catch them on as far as live bait goes. Crabs, thread fins, pinfish are some of the favorites. As far as flies go, um, lemon drops over the sand, cockroach, purple and black over the grass flats. Swim baits work really good for them. And dead baiting in my region also is a very effective way to fish them in sand holes and deep channels. Uh, big thing with tarpon fishing is etiquette. When you're out there running your boats, make sure you're not running over your fellow anglers out there. And if you've got a trolling motor, be using it, and it'll help you get a stealthy approach. Either that or a push pole is a great way to get on them. The less pressure on them, the more the fish are going to be happy, and the more chance you are going to be to hook up on one. Uh, if you don't have either one of those, you can drift, anchor up um, is another great way to do it. And another big thing, another big tip I tell a lot of people, and I see a lot of people fighting fish too long. Heavy gear is a must. 50 to 70 pound braid, and even 80 and 90 pound braid if you're in the right conditions. Um, a lot of drag on a heavy spinning reel with a heavy drag and a heavy rod, and something you can get at least 12 to 16 pounds of drag on. Get them, get them to the boat quick, and release them pretty quick. And I've got a photo here of Kevin and myself with a nice West Coast sharpen cut this week. Nice, good job there. Captain Hagalicious. Yeah. All right, what else you got for us this week, Bub? Staying in shore, uh, Captain Mario Costello, Tall Tales Charters out of the plantation in on Crystal River. Puts a good snook bite right now around the rocky shoreline and creek mouths that face open water. Yankee Town to Wackasassa Bay. He's getting in the middle, middle of the incoming tide and the middle of the outgoing tide when the water's moving the fastest. He's using a five inch jerk bait and a glow color and an eighth ounce jig head. And most of the fish right now in his area are ranging anywhere from 32 to 38 inches. So stepping up to a 40 to 50 pound fluorocarbon is a must. And I got a picture here of Rick Barkley with a beautiful Yankee Town snook. A nice one. Nice. All right, what else you got, Bub? Moving offshore, Captain Rob Davenport, a big nasty fishing charge in the St. Pete. Goods to Gamp Bite right now. And they continue to show up in anywhere from 40 to uh, excuse me, 140 to 180 feet of water over live hard bottom right now. We're using a six-aught circle hook 
80 pound fluorocarbon leader with a live pinfish and I've got a beautiful scamp love catching these guys from uh, Captain Rob on a big nasty that's a gorgeous game that's a nice Cute. picture good job bub all right go keep going what else uh, Captain Zach Zachary and Trident 2 Outdoor Adventures out of the Zella Keys Marina in Crystal River reports a plentiful amount of triple tail right now showing up mainly on the stone crab trap buoys anywhere from 10 to 20 miles offshore off of Homosassa. <clears throat> he's fishing the bottom of the incoming tide and he's tossing a live jumbo shrimp past the crab trap buoys when he sees these triple tail hanging out on him with a three-aught circle hook. 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. He's slowly retrieving it past the triple tail and then letting it sit. And I've got a great photo of a beautiful triple tail from Captain Zach. Nice job. All right, Hag. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Ozella Key Marina hotspots from the Northwest region. Jeff says, inshore snook showing up on the beaches in the passes, use sardines for bait on a 5-0 trocar circle hook and a 40 pound piece of diamond leader. And then offshore grouper over the rock piles and ledges in 55 to 85 feet of water. Use pinfish for bait and try hooking the pinfish through the nose with an eagle claw circle sea hook. What do you think, Bree? I think our producer made it very clear that you are not to call him Hagalicious anymore. I got that you is both. my name for I him. saw you like lose it, so I'm We I'm lost out. it. It's my name, Hagalicious. All right, it's time to <laughs> reel in awesome and discover Crystal River. Enter to win a deluxe CCA Florida Star getaway with accommodations provided by Plantation on Crystal River and guided fishing by River Adventure Tours. Included in your package is a two-night deluxe stay at Plantation Crystal River, breakfast for two, chef-prepared lunch or dinner for two at West 82 Bar and Grill, CCA membership and tournament fees for one, and invitation to the CCA host banquet for two on October 9th. Head over to FloridaInsiderFishingReport.com to enter. All right, the r, &R Tackle Southeast region is up next, and who better to fill in for our resident captain, Jimbo Thomas, than the r, &R himself, Ray Rocher. Welcome back to the show, Ray. Hey there. It's nice to be back. All right, Ray, tell, tell us about the tarpon in the Southeast region, bud. Well, there's really no shortage of tarpon here this time of the year. We have resident fish year-round. But then from February through June, we get a push of migrating fish. All of the inlets and the adjoining beaches between them are tarpon hotspots, as well as all the bridges, especially uh, around the, the uh, beaches, you know, like Bear Cut Bridge, et cetera. Uh, the feeding patterns change with the seasons, and right now crabs are king. Uh, in the wintertime, when it's cold and the shrimp are running, of course, shrimp are great. But right now, uh, crabs, live pinfish, mullet, topwater, and service surface swimming lures as well as soft plastics and flies are what dominate. Uh, 20 to 30 pound tackle is ideal, kind of like Hagman said, you know, you don't want to wear them down, give them the chance to get eaten by a shark, etc. Um, and it's not good for the fish. But a 60 to 80 pound fluorocarbon leader, 6-0 to 8 circle hook, uh, matching the hook to the bait. All the inlets and around the bridges uh, are best early morning and late afternoon. Um, in the inlets, I always prefer the outgoing tide especially late afternoon and evenings. And when you're in those inlets, look for color changes and tide lines. Rolling fish is obviously a no-brainer. Mark them on the depth re recorder and get up current or upwind of them and drift baits through the area. Um, in the inlets, uh, as I said, outgoing tide is good and around the bridges um, also we fish outgoing tide. Um, it's the time of the year that also schools of migrating fish can be found along the Oceanside Flats from Soldiers Key to Ocean Reef and they can be baited with live crabs or with fly tackle using crab pattern flies. Um, the average size tarpon in our region is about 40 to 80 pounds, but we've got plenty in the 100 to 150, so you kind of have to be ready for that. Tell us about the bone fishing permit, Ray. It's a uh, trifecta right now. Bone fishing permit are biting too. Nice weather is key. You know, when, when it's uh, calmer weather, a lot easier to see them. Water clears up. Um, we've been experiencing good bone fishing permit fishing around the inside and outside flats for the bonefish and the permit have been seen mostly on the outside flats also from Soldier's Key to Ocean Reef. Again early in the morning before the water gets hot and then late in the afternoon bonefish are uh, most active and you see them of course around the lower stages of the tide. I always like the last of the outgoing first of the incoming. And the permit have been cruising the hard bottom around the Oceanside flats and on the higher stages of the tide of course you'll see the permit around the, the edges of the flats and in the channels. Uh, the best bait for both of these have been quarter-sized crabs or crab pattern flies. 
All right, it's time for some offshore. So what do you got for me? Blackfin tuna. Uh, we call it dinner and a show between sailfish and tunas. Uh, that's our goal every day. We catch them here um, throughout the day, but of course, morning and evening again is a little bit better. Uh, live herring, pilchards, goggle eyes, sardines. I prefer fishing them on the kite. It gets the leader up in the air, but many have been caught on the flat lines, 100 to 200 feet of water. Uh, most of the tunas we're catching are 20 to 30 pounds. And April and May, I would say, is prime time for them. Uh, we're typically using 20-pound ta- tackle with 30 to 40-pound fluorocarbon leaders, 5.0 to 6.0 circle hooks. And, uh, again, late in the evening is when we – it's kind of the magic hour. We, we catch a lot of them then. If, of course, if you can have live pilchards, that really helps. So we've got a photo here of Donna, one of the FIRFR crew with the nice size tuna we caught a week or two ago. Woo. And nice. that was, uh, Donna. That was a lot of fun. Nice. Yeah. Tell us about the and sailfish. Then, oh, you got another yeah, picture? Sail, yeah, we got sailfish. We, uh, we've been doing a lot of that. Uh, along with the tunas, we catch sailfish mixed right in with them. Uh, yesterday we had 12 bites, so I had a couple cover-ups. This is the time of the year where we get packs of fish. It's a lot of fun. If you can find north current and blue water, that's really where the best sail fishing is going to be. And uh, again, we prefer kite fishing. Uh, we can do a lot of things with kites, like pick up baits in the air and move them. And so on live herring, goggle eyes, and pilchards, flatlined, uh, also work. And on the calm days, keep your eyes open for free jumpers. And a free jumping sailfish will typically jump into the current. So if we have north current, you get south of those fish, get lined up in the same depth you saw them jump, and put out a bunch of baits, and usually they'll show up. So. Uh, we got another picture of Colin, another one of the FIFR team with a nice sail he caught recently on our boat. Woo! And uh, go Colin! Took a picture, uh, took a picture off the bridge. It's another another shot I had. So, well, man, you've what been I got for you. You've been busy. Thank you so much for filling in for Mr. Jimbo. You did a great job. But you know what? It's time for me to read the hot spots from the R and R Southeast region. Inshore, look for the nighttime tarpon in the snook in the inlets and around the lit bridges using both live and artificial baits. And then offshore, fish the edge of the Gulf Stream late in the afternoon with live baits in 100 to 200 foot range for a mixed bag of blackfin tuna, sailfish, and kingfish. That was such a fun team day that was day. Was it? Did you Donna guys have Boy fun? caught one, Colin caught one, caught a kingfish. What'd you catch? A barracuda. Uh, Benita, I caught all the good stuff. They caught all the bad stuff. <laughs> you can't always catch them. I know. You know, I when actually, you go with me, you just dominate the whole show. So it was your turn to sit and watch. I, yeah, but you know what? It's funny. I actually, I get a lot of pleasure from people catching great fish now. I know I'm, how that feels. Yeah, I just smile across my face. I'll catch all the b- b- Benita you want. All right, we're bowing to the real legend Southwest region when we return. But first, Dave is playing Robin to Rick's Batman at the CCA workbench today for Academy Sports. Yeah, I never get invited on these trips. I never get invited. I would, I would hip check her right out You're of the way. She wouldn't be catching all the fish when I go. <laughs> We're going to be talking about tarpon. Rick's going to be talking Rick about is. tarpon. I'm going to be listening. You should too. <laughs> we'll be back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Contender Boats, always in the game. Fenwick, Sirius XM Marine, weather, fishing mapping, entertainment. Penn, let the battle begin. Stiffy, innovators in shallow water performance. And Daiquiri Deck, Sarasota's favorite place to meet. Reliability, Yamaha is known for it. And it's something boaters value because these days, few things are built to last. When we find something that is, we hold on to friendships, traditions, outboards, because every second on the water is sacred. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters choose Yamaha for the long run, for life, because reliability starts here. What started in the flats and bays has migrated offshore. GPS guided trolling motor technology has moved to boats in the 35 plus foot class and allowed anchoring capabilities on most center consoles in any depth of water. From snook and redfish inshore to grouper and swordfish way out deep, Rodan Marine Systems has a GPS anchor to hold your vessel on location. Set it, forget it, catch more fish.
Every year, Noble Air Charter flies over 20,000 outdoorsmen and families just like you, economically, to over 300 Bahamian and Florida destinations. Noble Air Charter makes a substantial investment improving booking and aircraft route planning to create the most affordable and economical flight possible. And tomorrow, Noble Air's team will rise to the challenge to raise the bar yet again. So it's time for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques here at the CCA Workbench. And quite a mouthful. Dave? Yeah, man. You, you want to go sit over there? No. I'm just kidding. No, no. <laughs> I could. I very well could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, so, but let's, let's talk about tarpon, Rick. What do you think? I think we We're should. We're going to talk about migratory, migratory tarpon. tarpon. Big ones. Not the little guys I catch in the, in the pond. Yeah. Great big ones. Out it, in the ocean, tarpon. So certainly... The fish, the little fish that you were, we're not talking to those. But I thought what it would be really cool, Dave, is that, you know, in the past we've talked about how you'd rig the baits and so on. We really never address the rig. Right. But there's a lot of new products out there that are really designed perfectly for tarpon fishing. So let's start off the Fenwick HMG blank, eight foot long and a heavy action rod. Stiff rod. Very stiff, capable of pulling a lot of pressure, more than you can probably, you and I can probably stand. Right. The key to it is an eight foot rod, Dave, is gonna allow us to cast a long, long way, probably 20% further than we can with a seven foot rod. Right. I learned this trick from Paige over on the West Coast. So the key is that with an eight foot rod, you can fish crabs, in Page's region, Threadfin's and Hageman's region. Then you can go over to Tommy's region and be fishing the same rod and reel combo behind the shrimp boats for the mm -hmm. tarpon there. In March and April, you can be in the Florida Keys fishing a big giant mullet. The key is that the rod and reel can go anywhere you want. It's right. loaded with 40 pound diamond, uh, braided line, and we use 40 pound because it casts further. A lot of guys are putting 65 and 80 pound, and you can't pull that kind of drag. You're the, pulling the, 17 or 15 this, pounds of yeah, drag. This reel might might pull 25, 30 pounds of drag at locked up. Correct. And how long are you gonna do, how many 30 pound curls are you gonna do? You, you can't. You're not, and, and if your stuff is tight, 40 pound braid is twice as what you're gonna need. Believe it or not, if your drag's working property and your boat moves. That's correct. So this is an 8,000 size battle pin spinning reel. The reason mm. why I like an 8,000 is one, it's not so big that for the ladies, it's not so heavy. And then the other reason is that if we go smaller, people have a tendency to reel against the drag and then that tears out the gears in most spinning reels. Now let's talk a little bit about this part of the leader. I double line the 40 pound diamond braid and then I'm gonna put some 40 pound diamond fluorocarbon leader and then if I'm fishing in some dirty water like uh, maybe tannic water or some muddy water behind the shrimp boats then you might bump up to a 60 or an 80 pound two feet of you can get a bite with leader. Yeah, you can now get remember away. this guys, you're gonna get a lot more bites with lighter leader. So with the design of circle hooks, most of the time their circle hook is on the outside of the fish's face and so you're not gonna usually wear through it. So speaking of hooks, let's talk about that. So my favorite hooks, Dave, are the Eagle Claw Trocar uh, circle hooks whether the, 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 the uh, TK series or the AP circle. Right. What I want to show you is this is an 8 -o. You can see that the gap, so when we're using big baits like a mullet or in the springtime or in the fall, we're going to hook this mullet through the top of the mouth and come out the t between his eyes and the top of his nose. Mm -hmm. You got to have a big gap. All right. Otherwise you're going to be crushing them. Yeah, unfortunately, bigger wire with bigger size hooks. I prefer when I'm fishing a thread fin, a pilchard, a crab, or even a pinfish, downsizing to a 6.0 or a 7.0. This is the same tensile strength that we use for the sailfish hooks in Guatemala. Right. Same exact hook they're using for the ballyhoos. Has plenty of gap space, but again, it's nice and small. So just remember, as you change regions, 
you can go up and down in the size of your leader, but you gotta make sure that you're just your hook sizes depending on the size of the bait. Yeah, and this 40 pound braid should catch them all. It does catch you them know, all. Should catch them all. Because you can throw, and you know, yeah. braid. And you can catch them fast. If you, you know, if you set your drag and you know where your things are supposed to break, it makes a big difference. So, you know, if you just throw 65 pound on there and lock it up, you can catch everything, but. It's not as, but you it's lose, not as sporting. You lose the distance, Correct. though. You know, yeah. this 40-pound diamond braid, 8X, is the diameter of 12. Right. So the color, I like the blue because I can see it on the tannic water, the orange. Some guys like green. It's your own personal preference. I got you. You did a good job. I know, I did. I, <laughs> right, it was man. awesome. Rick, that was a great seminar. I, I <laughs> yeah. really loved it. Everyone, <laughs> round of applause. We should Rick. do that every week. <laughs> every week, round of applause. <laughs> all right, tarpon are rolling all over the Bell's Southwest region, so let's hear from Captain Ronnie Houston to see how close he can get us. Talk to us, Ronnie. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to keep it simple in the Real Legends Southwest region. For the guy that's learning, a few tips I'm going to give you before I tell you about it. You want to think about migration, depths of 4 to 20 feet of water, moderate weather, when it blows, the fish go down, and scanning the horizon. So they, you want to target the inshore and near shore. But depending on the weather, they usually start their migration, like I say, from Shark River around February, into the Everglades region, through the 10,000 Islands region, on the beaches of Marco, heading north towards Boca Grande, which is right now in full swing. So you want to follow this migration all the way around the coast, staying on the outside. Now. Also another thing, Captain Danley relates them to the north reports. Like I said, migration. These fish are right on time right now. He's telling me Pine Island Sound, Fort Myers Beach, and Naps Point all holding fish. But to the south, Captain Joe Casero reports from Indian Key to Gordon's Pass. Fish are mostly in, de in deep troughs and in passes and in deep troughs on the outside of the Barrier Islands. He's saying 4 to 12 feet of water. Look for the fish to be rolling and free jumping both north and south. Live baits that can be used for these fish right now are herring, pinfish, mullet, crabs, three lines are under a cork, throwing recommend a 5 to 8 circle hooks, and a variety of 4 to 8 inch swim baits. When those fish get lady, lazy, you want to use cut baits on the bottom. So as they also are making their migration to the north, don't think all those fish are still in the north. You will find stragglers still on the outside. So for the guy that's learning, 4 to 20 feet of water, moderate weather, and scan the horizon, I got a couple nice fish that were just recently caught by Captain Danny Latham and Captain Joe Casaro releasing some nice fish. Now still on the inshore side, the snooks. Captain Brian Sanders reports the bite is picked up in the Everglades backcountry right now from Lopez River to Third Bay. He's telling me to focus in the middle bays along points with current as well as in the river mouths. Now he's also telling me fish are starting to show up down in that area on the outer barrier islands. He's going to tell me the current's going to be the key to catch these fish. Now, he's strictly using live pilchards, have been his key baits, but I can tell you what, I've been fishing a variety of artificials and the hard baits like the Berkeley Hijacker in the 100 series, and I'll tell you what, a lure that's really surprised me is the Chapo in the 90 series. The colors are bone, sexy back, and perfect ghost, along with the Bass Assassin 4 inch sea shads in white, lime truce and root beer on a quarter ounce jig head, and they got a picture of a couple of my snook just recently released while fishing with Captain Brian Sanders. Now on the offshore side, Tobias, Captain Mike Avenar reports right now from Goodland to Wiggins Pass, you want to concentrate fishing wrecks right now in depths of about 50 to 65 feet. He's telling me falling tides seem to be better. So some of those fish are on top, but they are on the slack tides or the weaker current. Most of the fish he's catching right now are on the bottom using live baits, whether it be herring, pilchards, or sardines. But I'm going to tell you, he's also telling me if you decide to fish the wrecks for the Cobias, Better have some crabs handy because they are also holding. He's telling me he's catching his permit right now on the 30 pound fluorocarbon and 3.0 tow car circle hooks for the permit. And I got a couple nice pictures fish recently caught. Kobe is in permits fishing that 50 to 65 foot range. Whoa. Wow. Last, last piece is going to be the mangrove snappers in the lane. Wing is past the Boca Grand, 55 to 75 feet of water. Fish wrecks and ledges. You can use box chum. You can cut up herring as chum, cut up pilchards. Once fish are, are chummed up, you can flatline or add just a little weight depending upon where they are. Or you can even use quarter ounce pink or chartreuse jig heads, 20 to 30 pound fluorocarbons, 2 to 4 oh circle hooks, and a variety of cup baits like herring, filter, squid, and shrimp will catch all these fish. All right, thank you so much, Ronnie. Good report. 
We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Caddy Can hotspots from the Southwest region. He says Redfish, Coon Key to Jack Daniels Key, Outer Gulf Islands on the higher stages of the tide using live pilchards and cut baits. And then offshore, Red Grouper, Marco to Fort Myers Beach, 95 to 115 feet of water using cut squid, herring, sardines, and fish the hard bottom. Man, Bronnie's all business. We couldn't even comment on those amazing fish photos. I know, Toby probably. You know what probably like, happened is awesome. the producer in the control room oh. is probably telling him to hurry up. That's what she does. Don't, don't the make fun her sucker mad. sucks the fun right out of the show. Don't do that. All right, since Mother's Day is quickly approaching, let's change the subject. And Father's <laughs> Day isn't far behind. Head over to reallegends.com now through May 18th for 40% off Real Legends apparel for mom, dad, and the entire family. Somebody's got to keep us on schedule. Somebody has to do it. Mm -hmm. Gotta be mean. Speaking of Real Legends, you know, we have another trivia question this week. No. Which is... What is it? Drum roll. Go ahead. What is the all tackle world record for tarpon? Oh. Rick, do you know this? Of course I do. Oh. All right. Well, head to Real Legends Facebook page and enter your answer in the comment section Friday at 11 a.m. to win a prize. And just a reminder, check in weekly on their Facebook page to win prizes if you answer the trivia questions correctly. You could always just phone a friend and call Rick because he knows all of them apparently. Gibson was the guy's name that caught it, and he oh, caught it in gosh. Africa. I won't tell you the size. Oh, you you got to figure hits. it out. All right. Well, we're continuing the Silver King Fest in the Startron Central West and Keys regions when we return. Plus, we're chatting with a special guest and friend from Ozello Keys Marina. Stay hooked, and we'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Power Pole, Total Boat Control, Berkeley, Your Fish, Our Science, Bahio, Fresh Eyes for a Rich Life, Blue Water Outriggers, Everything for Your Outdoor Adventure, R&R Tackle, From Our Tackle Box to Yours, Florida Coast Equipment, Florida's largest Kubota dealer. Visit one of our four locations or online at floridacoasteq.com. And Garmin, plot your paradise. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all-new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore. Real Legends Performance Outfitters. All you need to feel comfortable on the water all day. Keeps you cool, dry, and protected from the sun. Real Legends Performance Outfitters. Durable performance technology at an unbeatable value. Shop anytime. Go to reallegends.com to find a store near you. The only reel with over 100 years of heritage. Alvi Sidecast Reels allow you to cast over 150 yards with up to 900 yards of capacity. Alvi's state-of-the-art drag and 22-inch retrieve rate per wind is perfect for any surf challenge. Alvi Reels are manufactured to best practice standards and are in fact so robust that the Alvi also comes with a 10-year salt and sand warranty. For more information, go to alvius.com. Well, joining me is Gary Bartell from Ozella Keys Marina. And you know, Gary, thank you so much for sponsoring the hotspots from the Northwest region. Thank you. But you know, one of the things that came to mind when you guys came in for the live studio audience is we've never talked about the store, the ship store that absolutely. you have there at the marina. So why don't you tell everybody about yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. So Ozella Keys Marina is a old Florida bait and tackle. So we carry the necessities, Bahio sunglasses, um, we carry pen products, we carry Fenwick, uh, all different types of tackle bait that's designed for our area. We have ice, bait, tackle, um, live shrimp is the main thing. And then we also have uh, airboat tours, fishing charters, scallop charters, and then lodging on site as well. Now for people who don't know where Ozello Key Marina is, why don't you explain to them exactly where it is, yeah. how they can find you. So Ozello Keys Marina is in Crystal River, Florida, tucked all the way back up in the mangroves. So it's down a real windy road, great shore fishing along the way. Mile marker is six on Ozello Trail, hang a left and you're gonna run right into us. All right, so we sell shrimp there. 
We provide airboat tours. What about accommodations? Do we have accommodations? Absolutely. We've got you set up for RV sites, campsites, cabins, and we'll be having a bed and breakfast open up too. What? Yeah. Come on. Well, it sounds like we need a restaurant. It's coming. All right. Maybe a food truck. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> food truck. Can, can it, you know, the cool part about food truck is we can have shrimp one day and we can have steak the next day. Fresh catch. So if somebody's coming to that part of Florida, what would you advise them to come see? What's a must see in that part of Central Florida? You know, it, the, the fishing, uh, the airboating, the manatees at the springs, the wildlife parks, you're coming to see old Florida. So we don't have the amusement parks, but in exchange, we have uh, nature, we have those, those true amenities that you find in the older parts of Florida, which still exist. So where do people go to find out more about you? Ozellokeysmarina.com. All right, you're the man. All right, brother. All right, Bree, we got to get another region going here. Yes, we do, and he is correct. It's a perfect old Florida getaway. All right, Captain Jeff Page in the StarTron Central West region is always on his A game, and this week, he's proven it. Talk tarpon to us, Jeff. Well, as my hat says, I'm on Poom Patrol. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love you know it. What? And you, you know firsthand in my region, there's a lot of tarpon around here and there's a lot of ways to catch them. And kind of, you know, reiterating what Ronnie says, we have some uh, local fish that stay here year round, but the big migrating bunches, it all starts down at the bottom part of my region in Mocha Grand Pass and worked its way northward. And that is going on as we speak. Some of the really good areas along the beach are of course down in Boca Grande. And then as you work your way up the beach off of Venice on Casey Key, and then also Sarasota, all the way up to Longboat and then Anna Maria. And then there you have Passage Key and Egmont Key. And both those deep passes are very similar to Boca Grande Pit Pass. So there's a lot of fish that hold up in there. Now I'm no expert on the tarpon, but I catch my fair share of them. And I believe that they show up a little bit later up in the north part of the region versus down where Danny Latham says they're already catching them. Pine Island, Captiva Rocks, Yusepa Key, all good places that you can go right now and have shots at laid up fish. You know, there's a variety of baits that we use as as well, live baits consist of crabs, thread fins, pinfish, and even big pilchards. Uh, a good trolling motor is very useful, and the Rodan uh, spot lock really makes things good, especially when you're fishing around bridges and current and letting thread fins go back in the tide. That spot lock on the Rodan keeps you in place. I already heard you mention the Trocor 70 circle hook, Rick, and that's a pretty good starting point. You can go up, you can go down, but that 70, and I like to start with 60 pound fluorocarbon, and that's gonna get the job done. As far as lures go, uh, the bait buster works real well, and then any type of lip plug, you know I'm not much on lip plugs, but lip plugs work real well, and so do a purple and black fly. You taught me that a long time ago. I've got two tarpon photos tonight. First one is a gentleman I'm down in Boca Grande right now, but he's from Tarpon Springs, old school tarpon veteran, Jimmy Huddleston, AKA the HUD. And then my second picture is Eric Hernandez of Walt's Fish Market. Nice. Staying in short, you know, Rick, I, I, Rick, I think the last full moon, a lot of bigger trout have moved in. Since we shot the Sportsman Adventures, there's a lot more trout out on the flats and they're hitting that chrome topwater jaywalker 100 as well as the saltwater assassin golden brim four inch sea shad on a quarter ounce jig head and i've been catching a lot of them on the grass flats just off rattlesnake key as well as emerson point and all i'm looking for rick are birds diving pelicans diving and work that area in there sometimes it's on small bait so you're not going to see the bait but the trout are in there eating it and the trout are averaging 16 to 22 inches. And I have a trout photo tonight of longtime client Dustin Chicago Hansen with a nice speckled trout he got last week. Moving offshore, I believe this full moon that we just got over with pushed a lot of mangrove snapper in on the beach versus out 
because guys were catching them in 40 to 50 feet of water off the north end of Anna Maria, and they've been spot locking with their with their road ends and putting down small pieces of shrimp and cut up pilchards and then switching out on a light fluorocarbon, like 20 pound liter with a 2.0 or 3.0 light wire circle hook. We'll get the job done. I've got a real nice mango picture. Two happy clients with Captain Billy, the pirate nobles. And my last feature species tonight is amberjack. Amberjack still very dependable, 90, 110 feet of water over wrecks, springs, and ledges. Big live pinfish in any of your vertical jigs in the pink or chartreuse in pink if you're getting the job done. Captain Jason Stock reports good action off the north end of Anna Maria in 110 feet of water. And he's been catching other species while he's been messing with the AJs like tunas, snappers, and groupers. And the last photo is of a couple happy clients with Captain Jason Stock out of Anna Maria Island. All right, Paige. You know, I love the fact that everybody has a nickname, you know? So what's a nickname for Gary from Ozella Key Marina? What you got a nickname for him yet? Yeah, he kind of <laughs> reminds me of a big teddy bear. Gare Bear. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. Gare Bear. We'll just call him Gare Bear. Yeah. That'll be perfect. Gare Bear. All right. He has official now. He has a, 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 a nickname, and it is time for the Daiquiri Deck Hotspots there, uh, Poon oh Chaser. Poon Patrol. Poon Patrol. Oh, that's it. Inshore Tarpon are showing better in the afternoon along the beaches from Venice, South Jetty, to Boca Grande, and then live crabs and thread fins are going to work best for them. And then offshore mangrove snappers, some nice mangs starting to move in as close as 40 to 50 feet of water off a Longbow Key. Use fresh shrimp or a pilchard on a light 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, Brie. I mean, Gabriel's not the manliest. We'll have to work on that. It's just the first thing that came to mind. Yeah. But you know good. what else? You need a Poon Patrol hat. Just, I saying, do. just saying. Just saying. The Alta Equipment Keys region is iconic for that made tarpon bite, and Captain Randy Tao is here to tell us where the hot spots are. So, Captain Randy, get us ready for a Mother's Day weekend hookup, please. Hey, good evening, fish fans. You know, here in the Alta Construction Equipment region, Tarpon season is in full swing right now, and I mean they are about all the places you'd want to go fishing. Whether you're a fly fishing guy, a bait fisherman, they're not heavy in the backcountry because a lot of these fish are migrating down the coast. So this is the time of year where we'll see the big schools coming down the beaches, going around the outside flats on some of these big uh, bridges that we have, and also inside and around those bridges as well. Now the Upper Keys, Channel 2, Channel 5, local favorites. They're still holding good numbers of tarpon right now. Guys are catching them on live mullet. Seems to be either tide. Doesn't really matter if it's incoming or outgoing. They've been favoring kind of the evening tide lately where that uh, hard incoming tide in the evening has been producing some real nice fish. And then of course, as you get toward Marathon, and the uh, seven mile Bahia Honda area, a lot of those guys are catching them on crabs. Now, you know, Key West doesn't have a lot of bridges, but they still have a lot of tarpon down around Key West. And most of the guys down there are fly fishing. And also they do some sight fishing with the crabs as well. And uh, right now is prime time for the fly guys. They're getting the fly rods out. They're getting those worm flies ready. I'm sure that's gonna start happening here on this new moon we got coming up and uh, it has been a pretty good showing of fish right now. I've got a photo from Captain Benny Biondaletti fishing out of Bud and Mary's with an evening uh, tarpon he caught the other night with his bestie. Nice. Bestie. All right. Let's go ahead and tell me about the uh, Jack Crevals, bub. You know, jacks are a little underestimated, but I'll tell you what, Rick, we have caught our share of them over the years. and. You know, we catch them here. They're kind of a bycatch. It's not something that we really target a lot of times, but they show up. Sometimes it's a welcome appearance when they do, and it breaks up the monotony that's going on waiting for a tarpon bite. Whether it's, you know, throwing an artificial lure to them or catching them on live bait, they're always fun. And I'll tell you what, some of these big ones that you get into every now and then, a 20, 30 pounder shows up. And let me tell you, you got your hands full catching one of those especially on lighter tackle. Now, there are areas in the Gulf and there's areas around the Atlantic where they will school up. Certainly this time of year in the spring, you'll find them around some of the big wrecks on the reef. And you can go out there with live bait, you can chum them up. You can also throw a chugger or a jig 
and get them. And they're usually, you know, in the three to 10 pound range. Maybe you catch a 10 pounder and that's a big one. And every now and then some of the big ones show up. Well, I was tarpon fishing a few days ago in Indian Key Channel with uh, hours of boredom punctuated by moments of sheer terror. And we get a bite from a fish that we fought for 45 minutes. And I've got a photo of Mike and his son, Kyle, with a 30 pound Jack Curvell we caught tarpon fishing. Wow. That's super duper there, dude. All right, let's run offshore. Give me a report. You know, the grouper season opened May 1st, and it's interesting how popular this day has become. And everybody really was talking about, I'm going to catch a grouper. I'm going to do this. I've got a hot spot. And uh, I fished that day, and there were a lot of boats on the water. It was a Saturday as well. But a lot of the groupers can be on the edge of the reef, which is a lot of the yellowtail areas, 60 to 100 feet and also some of the deeper wrecks, you'll find them. And you wanna have some gear to catch these things because if you hook a nice big grouper, he wants to go back into structure. So you want a pretty heavy rod, braided line is usually a plus, and a 80 to 100 pound leader is another plus to try to get him turned before he gets uh, in the wreck and cuts you off. Now live bait like grunts or pinfish work really well. And I like to get around live bottom where I can drift and I can move, be moving with the current. And that way, when I get a bite, I'm already moving away from the structure he's trying to get back in. And I find that helps me a little bit in landing some of these fish. Now, talking to the grouper guru, Captain Victor Francini out of Key Largo, he told me before the season opened, he was gonna go catch a big grouper and he had a hot spot going. And he sent me this picture of his angler, Rod Hollingsworth from Sarasota, with a 50 pounder they caught Saturday. Nice, all right, you got about 30 seconds for the yellowtails, bub. The yellowtails are biting pretty well. Been a lot of current on the edge of the reef, 70 to 90 feet. There's been weeds on the surface, so you really gotta be patient and get your bait in between those weed lines. Chum heavy and be patient. That's the big secret right now. Uh, There's plenty around. It seems like most of the spots have them and uh, I like to do it one at a time so I can catch them. You put two or three rods in the water, they don't want to bite very well. And I've got a photo of Melody from Fort Myers doing just that over the weekend with her big yellow tail. All right, thank you so much, Randy. Great report from the Uptime Matters Alta Construction Equipment. Region inshore, tarpon fly fishermen. Look for the oceanside migrating schools of the fish heading south. A small orange fly may get it done in the afternoon. And then offshore, dolphin. Look for the birds in the weeds starting in 600 feet. Pay attention to fish swimming next to your boat when they get around the birds. (laughs) Imagine, oh, you're looking out there and he's right here. (laughs) Just had that visual. I'm sure it's happened before. It has. It has. What is he doing there? (laughs) All right, get ready for the CCA Homestead Auction and Banquet May 20th at the Homestead Miami Speedway. In addition to great times, good food, and of course, conservation, special guest Ron McGill from Zoo Miami will also be in attendance. Mm -hmm. And he is a presence to be seen. And that man is He's awesome. awesome. All right, tickets are going fast, so head over to FloridaInsiderFishingReport.com to get them. All right. All right, the Garmin Panhandle region is jumping in our sights next. But first, let's see what new products will make mom jump for joy over at the CCA Workbench with Dave Farrell. Dave, what you got? A skort. Oh, no, think, you're I talking about what, women's clothing? Yeah, exactly. Oh, no. I, think, I think that the CCA oh, no. needs to uh, do a raffle to get me to wear this skort. Then, okay, then. <laughs> we can make that happen, bro. Let's do it. See how much money we could raise to put me in that it's little on our to-do sweet list. little number. I'll put 500 in right now. Oh, I know you let's would. let's do it. We'll be back. <laughs> the Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Have fun out there. Penn, let the battle begin. Alta Equipment Company, where uptime matters. Ameritrail. Load, launch, relax. Rodan, set it, forget it, catch more fish. Discover Crystal River, Florida. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. Best lures, period. And Maverick Boat Group, makers of premium boat brands Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder, and Cobia. Yamaha's reputation for saltwater reliability is driven by the 4.2 liter V6 Offshore's 97% reliability and overall performance. Reimagined with new advantages like built-in digital electric steering for incredible responsiveness and exhaust rerouting for more powerful reverse thrust. 
The legacy of the reliable Yamaha 4.2 liter V6 continues, now more refined and capable than ever. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Scope, I tell you right now, if you don't have it, you are behind. It's just wild. It's like a video game. If you do not have that Garmin Live Scope, you are definitely missing out. Bassmaster Classic Champion! It's one of the most ancient forms of hide and seek known to man. And nobody knows how to play the fishing game better than the backcountry guides and offshore captains of the Florida Keys and Key West. Ready or not, here we come. So it's time for the Taco Marine uh, new products here at the CCA Workbench. And yes. You've, you got me going on the new Bahio sunglasses. Yeah, well, let's pick them up. They're the Bahio Casarina. It's a cat, cat eye style frame. It's great for the ladies. It's Mother's Day coming up. If you guys want to get out and get that. The cat, style, the cat eye style frame, it's got a big, uh, a big lens. So what it actually works to reduce glare, that larger lens, and uh, it, because it has the more surface area there. So... That, that really helps out those. They also have the lapis lens in there, which is it's a blue, uh, cuts down the 95% the of the blue light, which is a very harmful light. And it, it really, it, it fogs up your clarity. So if you get rid of all that blue light, it's like an extra a added value of polarization even without being actually polarized. That but they're is, all polarized though. That is so spot on, you don't even know how accurate that is. Well, you know, that's, you know. But you I can read. Them. You're, I can read. You're wearing yeah, them. Yeah, when, you you're in the, you know, when you're in the sun, that and that blue light is pounding you, and then when you can get rid of the blue light, it re relaxes your eyes, and you can actually see a lot better with it. So they come in four mirror colors, blue, green, uh, pink, and silver. And the blue is their darkest ones, good for offshore. The pink is good for uh, it's, it's the ultra inshore. light for inshore stuff, and the green and the silver are good for just about all the good everything inshore. Uh, a river lot of fishing. different, a lot of different color frames. We right. can't get in all of that. Right. We only have a ninety-minute show. Yeah, again, with the, and they have an oleopathic uh, coating on them, which you know, if you get oil or sunscreen or any of that, comes off really easily. So, BahioSunglasses.com. There you Very go. Very good. And what's this beautiful well, red we got and a black pen. We got creature. a pen battle three spinning reel. It's the high speed version. Um, it was the best in the saltwater fishing class at the ICAST in 2020. We didn't really get to talk about that, but it's a you know it's a saltwater reel made for salt. Full metal body and side plates. Got CNC gearing inside. It's all been cut with CNC machines. Giant heavy bale. It won't bend. HT100 carbon fiber drag, which is the same stuff that's in an international that we use to catch big marlins with. Five. Plus one uh, stainless steel ball bearing sealed uh, line capacity rings inside, so you can tell how much line yep. you're putting inside on there, here. which is yep. really cool. Yep. And it's got that super light spool, so super duper. Yeah. All man. right. What do we got? Bells? No, we'll do the trocar hooks there first. We got okay. some little uh, trocar hooks, eagle claw, TK4 non offset. Landset circle hook. It's a true circle hook. Doesn't have any offset. It's got a welded eye. Nine sizes, one aught to nine aught. You know, cold forged, high carbon American steel, uh, triple, you know, they got the trocar point, you know, it's made after a surgical instrument, which means it's got three sides on it. Very easily to penetrate, 50% easier penetration than uh, their biggest competitor. Yeah. Also the TK3 offset, that's the offset one. You can tell it's got a little offset to it. Right. Uh, Lancet circle hook, same deal, one. Well one, did I. Yep. One aught to nine aught. 
All right, well, uh, one minute to go. Designed and manufactured in Denver, Colorado. We better get to the mamas or we're gonna get fired. Yes, we will, yes we will. We got Real Legends. This is the short sleeve, free line top right there that you've got your hands on. Yes. Moisture management technology, UPF 30, sun protection. Classic V neckline. I notice you always have the V neckline. Yes. Solid texture show design. My cleavage. For easy matching, you can match it with anything because it's solid with a little texture in there. I actually love this. It's very nice. Very I like nice. it. It's very my lightweight. Easter egg moisture, colors. moisture management technology. And this is the Keep It Cool Skirt, which, you know, it's a skirt short. It's got a short under there. Bree said, make sure you show the shorts. So I did. UPF 50. Sweat activated cooling, moisture management system, elastic weight band, waistband for, you know, the expanding For mother. when you go eat Cinco de Mayo food. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, pleated detail. There's little pleats in there. So, you know. And where do we it'll go? It'll flur. Real Re Legends? Reallegends.com. You know what, Dave? Yeah. You pulled it Comes off. Comes off in a lot of additional patterns and styles. Did you say floral? Real Legends. Floral. I don't know what I was he trying to say. He said floral, like twirl and I was trying to flip. say twirl and flip at the same time. Uh, it's a floral. A it's, floral. A new Dave, it's a new Dave term. <laughs> All right, our captain in the Garmin Panhandle region is just as excited as you are for some tarpon chasing coming your way. So let's listen up and see how we can hopefully land the catch of a lifetime. Talk to us, Pat. Hey, Bree, that's a fact. You know, I mean, if you know me, I'm, you know, I, I have a long history of chasing tarpon along the beaches. They're hands down my favorite fish to fish for. I'm looking forward to Rick coming up this summer and going for them with me. And happily, they're gonna be arriving here soon in good numbers throughout our coast. Some fish are already in our area, but late May, all of June and July, and some of August are, are when we typically target tar tarpon. The fish are traveling east to west along our beaches, and unlike South Florida, where crabs and shrimp are the primary forage baits. Up here, they're feeding on bait fish. Over in Apalachicola, uh, uh, the bait of choice is gonna be menhaden. Well, on the western beaches, my the favorite baits are herring, LYs, and cigar minnows. Uh, in Appalachia, you can get away with uh, pretty heavy leaders and large circle hooks. They've got you know very off-colored water there, but in the clear waters of our beaches, stealth is definitely the key. I use 50 to 60 pound fluorocarbon for a leader, seven aught trocar circle hooks, and you really don't need a boat to play with the tarpon game in the Panhandle. Uh, plenty are landed from our Gulf Front piers using wider chartreuse swim baits. And the tarpon seem to bite exceptionally well when they pass the piers. Uh, when the tarpon do show up along our beaches, they average 80 to 100 pounds. But some bona fide monsters, you know, 180 to 200 pounders are also present. And there's a photo of a tarpon caught last summer by Brittany McWaters of Destin Live Bay. Uh, she jumped off the Live Bay boat and went fishing with me for the day. And it was a pleasure having her on the boat. Nice. And right. then staying in shore, if you haven't taken advantage of this spring's exceptional pompano fishing, you need to get to the beach. The water is still clean with just the slightest presence of June weed. But once that June weed sets in, uh, beach fishing gets a bit complicated. Uh, there's plenty of pompano still along our beaches, but the bycatch of bluefish, ladyfish, hardtails, they've increased significantly in the last you know, six or eight days, which may be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your point of view. Uh, set fishing from the beach with rods baited with fleas is a standard way to pompano fish. But if you want to minimize bycatch, stick with sight fishing with jigs. Either walk the beach with the stun to your back, set up a ladder on the first sandbar, or get tight to the beach with, with your boat where you're allowed. And uh, it takes a bit of practice to um, kind of dif differentiate the pompano from the bluefish and the ladyfish. But if you see round silver flashes, you better fire your jig. Pink chartreuse and pearl white jigs tip with a small strip of shrimp or fleek flavored fish bites on a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader is definitely the way to go. And there's a photo of Jim Young uh, from Nashville, Tennessee, with a, a redfish he caught off of Walton County site fish for Pompano, so he's taking advantage of that bycatch. All right, let's go offshore. Move, go ahead. Yeah, Rick, moving offshore. I tell you, the first week of Amberjack season in the Garmin Panhandle, it didn't disappoint. There was plenty of jacks being caught, some pretty large ones, and also the uh, they're being caught from boats, really from all of our inlets, Panama City, Destin, and Pensacola. The key to catching them consistently is two things, location and bait. Find the, You're going to find the amberjacks in high relief, natural and artificial bottom, kind of like the southwest edge. But even more specifically, hit sunken wrecks like tugboats, shrimp boats, the Ozark wreck, the Empire Mica, or the Alaska, or similar you know, big metal structures. Basically, those bigger metal wrecks and the deeper the water, the better for the bigger jacks. Uh, definitely going to want to use a high-energy bait like uh, blue runners, mullet, herring, threadfin herring, 
Um, all of these baits, put them on a slip sinker rig with a long leader, give them plenty of leash to run around. The, jack, the Gulf side, the Gulf jacks, the amber jacks are running up to and over 50 and 60 pounds. And then finally, I've mentioned offshore, the blue water being, being pretty close. It doesn't always happen, but right now it is happening. It's been that way for the last few weeks and quite a few Wahoo are being caught. Most are being caught by the charter boat fleet as they travel from bottom spot to bottom spot. I know Captain Chris Kirby on the backlash out of Destin, he had a really nice Wahoo on Sunday, caught pulling baits between amberjack spots. So have a dedicated person responsible for deploying a bait whenever the boat is underway and then retrieving it upon arrival. And it can really add a nice bonus fish to your catch. Also, as always, pay attention to anything floating like a log, pallet, you know, anything on the surface that might hold some bait. Lures of choice are high-speed metal jet heads, trembler-style plugs, black, purple, orange, and red color patterns that are certainly preferred for wahoo fishing. Um, but they're, that's that's one of my favorite eating fish out there. So it's, my, mine it's too. To get them. Mine too, Pat. Thank you so much. Good report from the Garmin Panhandle region. It's time to take a look at the Blue Water Outrigger hotspots. Pat says that. Uh, inshore, we're going to go big speckled trout on the grass beds of West and North Bay using top water walk the dog baits like the Berkeley Hijacker 100 or Jaywalker 100. And then offshore, head to the fads at the Spur Troll Ballyhoo for Mahi and possibly a yellowfin tuna brief. Well, Rick, as we all know, catching a tarpon is a big deal, and catching one this summer can also mean you win big in the star competition. $10,000 yes. in prizes from star sponsors could be yours. And remember, size does not matter, but you must catch. Take a photo and release with care. Pick up your official star measuring device after May 17th at your local Academy Sports and Outdoors or other star distribution locations. Star begins May 29th, so head over to ccaflstar.org to sign up now. That's right. All right, the Alvey Reels Northeast and Fish Bites East region is swimming in the spotlight next, so stay hooked, and we'll be right back. All right. Okie dokie. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by StarTron, cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. Alby Reels, a better way to fish. Berkeley, your fish, our science. CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 35 years. Diamond Fishing Products, our reputation is on the line. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing, book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com and strike zone fishing. Thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. We are the Fish Bites Nation, and this is your invitation. So grab some fish bites and get busy casting, because you can't join the nation without doing the catching. Ask for Fish Bites or Fish Bites Fight Club lures, or visit fishbites.com. Come explore untouched Florida, where you'll step into Holy Sea Cow and fish pristine waters where you'll reel in, whoa! Come discover Crystal River with exciting adventures and incredible surprises everywhere. From exhilarating river adventures to scalloping in the Gulf to delicious fish to fork cuisine, this is the place where you can relax into, ah! Just a short drive from Tampa and Orlando is the amazing Discover Crystal River, Florida. Learn more at discovercrystalriverfl.com. Service and reliability makes Alta Equipment the leader for all your construction equipment needs. With seven locations across Florida and preferred brands like Volvo, Toro, Toc, Avant, and Rotec, Alta has the equipment to get the job done. When I need equipment, I trust Alta. From agriculture to landscape to construction, Alta has you covered. For sales, rentals, service, and parts, see your local Alta Equipment dealer today or call them at 844-GO-TO-ALTA. 
Join in the fun and reel in awesome in Crystal River and Homosassa during the family-friendly CCA Star Fishing Tournament. It's great for all ages and experience levels. Let our professional captains take you on a fishing adventure and make sure to stay longer to discover the soul of Florida here in Crystal River and Homosassa. Enter to win a deluxe CCA Florida Star Tournament getaway at the Plantation on Crystal River. Enter online at floridainsiderfishingreport.com forward slash contest. All right, the Alvey Reels Northeast region is more than ready to top tarpon season from last year. So, Tommy, tell us how we're going to get them done this year. Bree, you're right. We had such a great tarpon season last year. I cannot wait for the big tarpon to show up this year in the Alvey Sidecast Northeast region. You know, there's a few fish starting to show up throughout the region, but they really haven't shown up in big numbers just yet. I've seen a few in the ICW. But, you know, the water needs to warm up just a little bit more for those bigger migrating fish to really show up. Now, we have a great tarpon fishery here all summer long and even into the early fall months. We get some of those big migrating fish right along the beach. They're usually feeding on pogies during the summer, and then they'll switch over to the pogies and the mullet during the early fall. Now, one of my favorite ways to catch tarpon here is to fish behind the shrimp boats. And when the shrimpers, they dump their bycatch, you're going to find tarpon behind uh, those shrimp boats sometimes they're in a big time feeding frenzy it's one of the few ways you can actually sight fish tarpon in my region and you can also fish for tarpon around the pogey pods that are right along the beach i'll use one of those eagle claw circle hooks one of those trocars in a seven to ten knot depending on the bait size and free line or float one of those live pogies around the bait pods now you can also fish a bait under the pogey pods and sometimes that's where you're probably going to get the most bites. Now, my clients also had some great success tossing some big saltwater assassin paddle tails to those big beach fish last year. Beach tarpon, they average 60 to 100 pounds, but kind of like Pat was saying, we see some giant fish over 150 pounds every year. Now, we also have a good population of smaller tarpon in the canals and in some of the bigger, longer creeks throughout the region. Now, right now, there's quite a few 10 to about 30 pound tarpon in the canals and creeks from Tomoka to Palm Coast. A big live shrimp, a mud minnow, or a finger mullet under a float or just free line one of those, it's gonna work well for those smaller tarpoons. And I've got a picture, you know, tarpon, guys, they're my absolute favorite fish to take pictures of, they're so cool. This is one that I took last season of an aired out fish with one of my clients fly sitting there in that tarpon's mouth. All right. Nice. Now, staying in short, you know, we've got the influx of finger mullet, and that means the flounder, they've started to show up in better numbers this week. We have a great flounder tide this weekend with an early afternoon low tide. And you know that best bite's usually on that last of the outgoing. Target the creek holes and anywhere there's a small run out that's holding small baits like finger mullet or shrimp. If you can't find a smaller finger mullet to use for bait, a mud minnow is always gonna work well. Now my clients, they've been catching quite a few nice flounder this week as a bycatch when we're fishing for redfish and trout using a saltwater assassin sea shad uh, up on the flats. Again, we're just targeting around the schools of bait. The average size of the flounder is about one to three pounds, but talked to a couple of guys, they got some in the seven pound range. So they're starting to show up. And speaking of bigger flounder, I've got another picture here. Amy Kennelly sent me this picture of a couple of doormat flounder that she caught in Jacksonville, right near Mayport. Now heading offshore, Guys, the cobia, they've been hanging on the beach a bit the past couple of weeks. Uh, you know, it really hasn't been a great season so far, but we're still hopeful. And there are a few fish to be had. The manta rays, they're definitely migrating through and almost, uh, and although most of those fish, they or most of those rays have not had many fish, if you put in the time, you probably can find some cobias swimming on their backs. Live baits like mullet or pinfish, they've been working well, but a big paddle tail or a, buck to, a bucktail is gonna be a go-to for most anglers. And I think Jim Ross was talking about this last week, but you know, you go a little lighter on your presentation, a little less weight, you have a less chance of hooking that manta ray. That can go a long way for everybody because that, after that manta ray has been hooked a couple of times, it's gonna be really shy and getting close enough to make a cast to any cobia that it might have on it, it's gonna be really difficult. Now the water, it's warming up really, really fast. So it's probably the last little bit of the beach run. So if you get a chance, you might wanna get out there before they're gone. Now staying offshore, you know, the mahi, they've shown up big time throughout the region over the last week or so. Most of those fish are coming from around the ledge. 
Uh, but I did talk to my buddy, Nate Creeder from Team Creeder Fish. He tells me that quite a few fish have been caught a little inshore of the stream as well. Now the wind, it's been changing a bunch from west to south, north. It's making it tough to find a color change or weed line. But you know what, if you do find one of those things, you're gonna find some fish there as well. Most of the charter guys at the conch house in St. Augustine, you know, I've been seeing them coming in with limits or close to limits pretty much all week. Now there's also some nice blackfin tuna and a couple of wahoo. They've been caught in those same areas as those mahi. So keep an eye out and look for those mahi to be pretty thick for at least the next couple of weeks. And I've got one last picture here. Kevin Range sent me this picture of a lit up Whoa. mahi that he caught east of Jacksonville. How pretty is that fit? That's, That's awesome. That's beautiful, dude. Thank you so much. As always, Tommy, great report, great pictures. Keep up the good work. And we're gonna take a look at the strike zone, Northeast hotspots from the Northeast region. He says inshore flounder on the, the last couple hours of the outgoing tide in the south end of the region, target creek holes and smaller runouts, holding bait with the finger mullet or a mud minnow on a quarter ounce jig head. And then offshore, mahi at the stream throughout the region. Look for the weed lines, the current edges, and some floating debris. I hope you catch one like that one. Me too. I know how much you like those things. I do, Dorado's my fave. Mm -hmm. All right, it's time to head to the beach in the Fish Bites East region and catch the tarpon migrating up the coast from the Keys. So let's talk with Captain Mike Holiday to get a little more info. Talk to us, Mike. That's the scoop, Bree. Tarpon are just starting to migrate into the area. They're coming out of the Keys. It'll only get better over the next two months. The peak action on the beach will be in June, uh, but we're seeing fish all right, you know, right now. We're also starting uh, to see the resident tarpon showing up in the Loxahatchee River, uh, the north and south forks of the St. Lucie River, up in the Indian River around Big and Little Mud Creek, and around the mouths of all the inlets in my region. Those beach fish, though, the beach fish will travel in schools that you can get in front of and cast to, target those fish with live crabs, mullets, red fins, or sardines or you can throw bright colored flies in the middle of the day or dark, darker colored flies at, you know, at dusk and dawn. Um, on the inside, those fish are more random rollers. They're not those big skulls. They're just fish random all over the place. And, and you can put a live mullet or two out behind the boat on 60 pound fluorocarbon leader and a 6-0 trocar circle hook, and then put somebody up on the bow and have them cast to the rolling fish with a saltwater assassin Houdini colored four inch sea shad. The beach tarpon average like 40 to 80 pounds as inshore fish can be anywhere from 10 to 60 pounds, but don't be surprised if you catch one over 100. The other thing, we had a big push of bait onto the beaches over the weekend, and a lot of those mullet, thread fins, and pilchers that showed up will start moving in the inlets and onto the nearby flats and shorelines. All that food as the snook fired up and the fish are feeding heavy to beef up for the summer spawn. That means places like Taylor Creek, and Northbridge and Fort Pierce. They're seeing a lot of jumbo snook right now chasing mullet, as is Palm City Bay and the St. Lucie River. And then at night, the Roosevelt Bridge and the Jensen Beach Causeway uh, are both seeing good numbers of fish. In Palm Beach County, uh, the Loxahatchee River, the Ermine River, and the seawalls in the intercoastal waterway are producing the best snook bites. Start your day throwing topwater plugs or mullet colored eye dappers and then move to live mullet, pilchards, or thread fins. Remember, on the higher tides, you're gonna have a lot of water in front of the seawalls to work the seawalls. On these extreme low tides, you wanna move away from there and work the docks. The average snook in my region is gonna be like five to 15 pounds, but we're seeing them up to 25 pounds right now. All right, tell us about offshore, bud. Well, the southeast winds have started to bring the offshore bait schools in closer to the shore. I was just talking about that. The kings are dogging them early and late in the day. Uh, we're still seeing good school king bites on the reef off Jupiter in that nine, 90 to 120 feet range. Uh, we're seeing them on the Loran Tower Ledge, the Evans Crary Reef, the offshore bar south of Fort Pierce, and the eight mile reef off Stewart. On the days when the wind goes west, the big kings are charging the beach, and we're seeing them in the kingfish hole off of Hope Sound, and also uh, up in the Vero Cove. Right now you can you know, run up to just about any bait school, sabiki up some baits with an R&R &R sabiki rig, then put them out on number four wire stinger, uh, stinger rig, and just slow troll circles around those bait schools until you get the bite. Almost everyone's got kings on them right now. On the reefs, 
you want a slow troll, a Spanish sardine, or a thread fin, or a blue runner, or you can drift with a three-hook Palm Beach rig and 50-pound fluorocarbon leader and a live or dead sardine or pilchard. And then for the fish on the beach, uh, a double-hooked live mullet is pretty much money uh, on those fish. The average king is going to be 12 to 18 pounds with fish to 40 pounds. <laughs> and I, I, I've got a photo there. That's just one of the fish we caught this week. We caught that out of the kingfish hole. That fish ate a live mullet. And that's sort of your typical school-sized king that you're going to see on the beach. The other bite, the dolphin bite, has been a bit inconsistent. But on the days when the fish push through, there's good numbers along with the occasional big fish. Those same, you know, southeast winds are bringing the bait and warm water. Also stack up those weed lines offshore uh, right along the current edges and, and, and the, uh, you know, the rips and the reefs. Uh, those are the feeding zones for the schoolie dolphin. The larger fish will come out, out of open water, either under birds or around a small floating object or just randomly encountered. This is the time of year when you want to cover a lot of water. You can do that by pulling rig ballyhoo or a feather and strip combination. Work the edges of the weeds until you get the bite, and then use spinning gear to target the schoolie to follow your hook fish to the boat. And the average dolphin right now is like 8 to 18 pounds, but they are being caught up to 40 pounds. All right. Well, we need to know about the average bass fishing, so why don't you give us the bass report, bub? Yeah. You know, I was talking to Captain Nathan Shell of OkeechobeeBassFishing.com. He said he's been leaving Okeechobee and going to Headwaters Lake Reservoir in Keenansville all week. He said the bite's just so good. He can't pass that up. Um, he's had both big fish and big numbers. His, <laughs> for example, his, his clients caught and released 190 bass in three days. And they're throwing everything from topwater plugs and frogs to worms rig Senko style and square bill crankbaits. Um, it's starting to get hot, so you want to be on the water by 6.30 at the latest, he said. Watch for fish blowing up in the grass. And the best action has been along the hydrilla mats and floating weeds that are out in open water, not so much along the shoreline. Just work the edges of the veg that vegetation. And if you can find that vegetation bordering the deeper holes, you'll really find them schooled up. By 10 o'clock, it's time to switch over to live shiners or a Texas rig June bug colored worm. I got a photo. Um, uh, Nathan Schoen sent me that photo. That's Jeff from Panama City with an eight pound, nine ounce fish. And that fish ate a top water plug. All right, Mike, thank you. Great, thorough report. Appreciate you. TNH Marine hotspots from the East Region coming up inshore, tarping in the mouth of Big Mud Creek. Dawn Bite, uh, you can sight cast Houdini colored four inch sea shads or live mullet. And then offshore, kingfish and mutton snappers on the Loran Tower Ledge. Use sardines, thread fins, and pilchards. I think we're due for an Okeechobee trip, just I saying. Think. All right, we're chasing down the real edge in Central East Region when we return right here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick, the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. The IGFA, fish for the world. Noble Air Charters raising the bar yet again. Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy, fishing for adventure. Real legends, everything you need to live life local. And Taco Marine, troll the edge. It's one of the most ancient forms of hide and seek known to man. And nobody knows how to play the fishing game better than the backcountry guides and offshore captains of the Florida Keys and Key West. Ready or not, here we come. At Florida Coast Equipment, we understand you don't work banker's hours, so neither do we. You have a business to run, you have a family to feed, and you need your machine up and running. So our service team and our parts department will be there. If that means, we have to stay late, we'll do it. If we have to start early, we'll do it. Because at the end of the day, you want equipment you can depend on and people you can trust, and we have a service team that will be there to service you. Pump up the performance in all of your engines.
kick your gas into gear with StarTron. I'm Captain Rick Murphy and I'm a life member of CCA. Why am I so involved with CCA, you ask? Because I want our fisheries to be in better shape for my kids and their kids. CCA is working to ensure the future of recreational fisheries and the rights of recreational anglers. The future of fishing starts today with you. How do you want to leave things with your kids? If you're like me, you'll want to make the right choice and go to joincCAflorida.com right now. Today's power pole tip, we're talking about the power pole spikes. The power pole spikes come in two models. Ultralight, like I'm holding here, which is perfect for kayaks, canoes, paddle boards. The Holocore technology keeps this spike extra light and easy to use in those smaller vessels. The HD model, which stands for heavy duty, of course, is great for your technical polling skiffs, but it's also good for all your beach going, sandbar going, pontoon boats, party boats, and even up to big contenders. I go buy sandbars from Sarasota to Key West and I'll see boats using two or three of them. The neat thing about that is you're avoiding any use of anchors, ropes, or chains, and it's holding your boat tight and secure. And also, they can be paired up with Micro, Powerful Micro, and if you purchase the Powerful Micro along with a spike, HD or ultralight, Powerful is going to stroke you a check for $100. And that's today's Power Pole Tip. All right, well, it's no secret after hearing from all of our captains that Tarpon, they're a fan fave. And for our captain in the Real Legends Central East region, it's no different. Nope. You ready to chase some poon, Jim? I am so ready. <laughs> in fact, we were doing it today, Bree. Good. And welcome, you know, to all of those new, new guys in the studio. It's great to have some people back in there again. And, uh, you know, the thing that's really cool about tarpon is that in my region you can catch them from two pounds to 200 pounds and they are one of my favorite fish to catch i love chasing tarpon like i said today they were absolutely on fire off of cocoa beach now if you're targeting the smaller fish though you want to look in the lagoon systems you want to they're going to eat they're going to eat shrimp pilchards finger mullet mud minnows any kind of small bait fish basically is the best way to catch them on a little one ought to three ought size circle hook or you can use a saltwater assassin three inch shad, the straight tailed shad on a one eighth ounce jig head or a weedless worm hook. And you can catch those baby tarpon. You can skip up under mangroves and things. Yeah, that's that's it there, Rick. That's a perfect little one to throw. The baby tarpon love it. Good colors are opening night, baby bass, Arkansas shiner and alewife. And then for the larger fish, uh, our coastal fish, that's what I was doing today. And I'm telling you right now, it was on fire. Uh, we just had bite after bite after bite today. Now, tarpon do what tarpon do. So you're not always gonna catch them, but you can increase your odds by rigging your live bait with at least a five aught size inline tournament circle hook. And I prefer a seven aught or sometimes even an eight aught if the bait's a little bit bigger. I've got a picture here of one of the fish that we had uh, boat side not too long ago. And of course, you know, that's your typical silver king. Just beautiful, beautiful fish out here off of Cocoa Beach. Looking now, good. my second species, we're gonna stay inshore a little bit, mangrove snapper. We have had a consistent bite of mangrove snapper from New Smyrna down to Edgewater, and it's super easy to catch these fish. You need a split shot, a small hook, and some kind of small shrimp or live bait, and you can get these things to, to bite. Now, here's the key. You gotta find them hanging around the lighted docks at night. That's where you're gonna get your bigger fish or the undercut mangroves or anywhere where there's a rocky area that's got some current sweeping by it. Most of our snapper are running about 11 to 14 inches right now. And swinging offshore, yellowfin tuna, you got to get over to the east side of the Gulf Stream, but if you get there, you're going to get some really good shots. We had the other side tournament that just happened this past weekend, and the guys caught some really nice fish out there, averaging 75 all the way out to about 120 miles at that 120 buoy. Um, obviously, ballyhoo, mullet work, uh, you're going to use any kind of a rigged uh, skirt with a with a, a, a tuna a tuna set a tuna hook set in it. You're going to pull those at higher speeds if you're not pulling them in conjunction with those live baits. Now, here's one of the things that you need to do. Captain Ed Dwyer is one of the masters of this, and he's the one that actually holds the other side tournament. But he says that if you target the smaller packs of birds, you're typically gonna find bigger fish. When you find bigger packs of birds, a lot of times it's smaller tuna, and a lot of times it'll be black jack, uh, blackfin and even skipjack tuna mixed in there. Our average yellowfin is running 35 to 45 pounds right now. And then my last species offshore is sharks. Now, 
If you like to just have fun and catch fish, spinner sharks, black tip sharks, sandbar sharks, bull sharks, fine tooth sharks, there's all kinds of sharks along the beaches and you don't have to go far from the surf break all the way out to about the 25 or 30 foot mark is all you have to go. And some of these fish are running into the eight and 10 pound range. Uh, getting them to eat is not a real problem in my real legend, Central East region. All you have to do is put out some form of live bait, be it a pilcher, a pogey, a mullet, or some kind of a chunk bait on the bottom if you're anchored up and you can catch some really nice ones. You can even catch them in the lagoon right now. Here's a picture of a little bull shark that we caught on the flats of the Indian River the other day. And I'm telling you right now, is a great time to be out on the water. Everything is biting this week. So Jim, tell me a little bit before we go to the hot spots. Tell me a little bit about your tarpon fishing. You say it was on fire. Oh Run my goodness, Rick. You got about 45 seconds, tell me. So we had schools, uh, we have schools that run along our beaches and the tarpon aren't really in a school like you see in the Keys. Like that Keys uh, f um, advertisement that just went on has a string or a little pot of fish come along. We have loosely associated groupings that are out in the 25 to 30 foot zones, and you're gonna find these fish, they can be four or 500 yards square, but if you get in the up current side or the upwind side of them and drift down through them with your baits, you will catch those fish. I love it. Hey, so you ever throw a pinfish under a cork with about eight or nine feet a liter and watch what happens? <laughs> That's a great way to catch them. That's a great way to catch them. And yes, we do that. And we do that more in the lagoon systems um, in like July and August. That's where we, those those type of baits really shine at that time of the year. That Look pin, at Rick, that, he's so excited. That pinfish <laughs> is so underrated. I love him, man. But anyway, I love you. Appreciate your love great you, work Jen. tonight. We're going to go ahead great and take job, a look guys. at the Rodan hotspots from the Central East region. Inshore, Black Drum in the Hallover Canal use cut crab on the fish, on a fi uh, fish finder rig. And then offshore, grouper on the reefs and wrecks in 200 to 200. 150 feet of water use live grunts, croakers, and a blue runner for bait. This is Rick happy right here. He's got his <laughs> swinging feet. Yeah, He's just man. excited to go catch those tarpon. I know. He's so excited. We're gonna go. All right, well, tarpon time is just about ended here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report, but it's just beginning for all of you anglers. So stay tuned for a little longer because we're telling you what your future catch of the week will be when we return. I wonder what that is. I wonder. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories, fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. We are for those who know. Those who know that opportunity is nothing without preparation. Those who know that the right gear can make or break a day. Born out of a need for reliability. Tested and proven on the Miss Brit Charter fleet. From terminal tackle to all your live boot needs. Whether you're fishing for fun or looking to win a tournament, R&R Tackle has what you need to stay ready. Next week, we are talking tuna. Tuna! Everyone's been catching them, so let's talk about them. All right. Rick, we're standing over here by this beautiful 1952 Chevy 3100 hot rod. You know, Bree, I've been asked a whole bunch of times, let's talk about what's underneath the let's hood. See so it. let's just show what's underneath let's the hood. Let's take a look at the undercarriage. How about a 350 horsepower Chevy crate motor, twin dual fans, oh. air conditioned, power steering, ceramic headers, tied into her turbo, turbo 400 automatic.
automatic transmission, power windows, it's got it all. And I'm talking, it's a hot and you commodity can to get be driving. It now 50 you miles to the gallon. CCAFlorida.org <laughs> forward slash hot rod. Get your tickets. We'll see you next week. Happy Mother's Day. Bye, Thank you for tuning in. That's a beautiful